Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. I'm Wale coming to you live on this program, The Wisdom of God for African Transformation. The Wisdom of God for African Transformation. So on this very particular program, my people, we are considering this topic. What should be a Christian disposition towards burial, towards death, towards, you know, any form of horrible evil like that? What should be a Christian disposition? We hear some Christians say that, um, in fact, some people even pray it in prayer that um, some are in the mortuary, some are in the grave, some are in the hospital. But thank God, because of your grace, you saved me. God, you have saved me. So we want to see whether those kind of things, whether they are actually good, Be especially when we see that God was in more, Jesus, Jesus Christ was in more horrible situation. So we started this program based on the fact that I attended one burial ceremony last week. I attended one burial ceremony last week. So the, the, what we used to hear in church is that, oh, thank God you did not die young, you shall live old. Because you have paid your tithe, all those kind of things. But we see this brother who was so devoted, paying the tithe, doing everything, and he died young. So when we were listening to the preaching, we did not hear the pastor was a little bit confused on what to preach. He began to say that there is a room self-contained called grief that all of us will need to go. Uh, death is very, very painful thing, but it is joyful thing. So the question now is, we see... To the left, to the right, a lot of people saying things according to um, their own understanding when there is death of a Christian, of a Christian this time. What is our right disposition? Whether we are the one who to die, though, to die, oh, whether we are the one dead, whether we are the one about to die, whether we are the one witnessing death. First and foremost, let's all of us try to correct first misconception. Well, I know you know the meaning of death. Death is just simply the um, to stop existing on this earth, to translate to life beyond. All those kind of things, those are the meaning of death. To stop breathing, to be put into a casket, to be put six feet down the, down, the, down, the, down the ground. Those are dead. Those are dead. Of course, I will post a picture showing death. So what should be our disposition as true child of God? When we see that um, we went to Bible and we saw what some people say when they were about to die, for we to know the right thing to think, for we to know the right thing to be doing, anytime we begin to think about death, that we are not going to live in this life forever. So the question is, what is our right disposition? The first person that we saw last in our last program was David. In the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 36, he said, David, having served his generation, sleep in the Lord. So this was a recommendation given to David. So that means that one of our disposition around death, or the cycle around death, or when we view death, when we think about death, all this kind of situation, it's for we to ensure that we have served or we are serving our generation. Another person that we saw, we saw Joseph. Joseph said, I die. Joseph was about to die. And he called, he told the whole of Israel, I die. But my God will surely deliver you out of the land of captivity. So we are trying to see people who were about to die or who dead or who, 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 who even died. We even see Abraham in heaven, all those kind of people. So Joseph said, I died. But my God will surely visit you and bring you out of the land of captivity. Today is 31st. Tomorrow will be 1st of November. i like us to know that tomorrow will be the final part of our disposition towards death. I want Christian to know what we should be thinking about. Now we saw um, David serve his generation. He served poor people. He, he developed his generation. Then he slept. We saw Joseph said, I die. But my God will surely deliver you out of the land of captivity. We saw Israel, that is Jacob. You know, God changed the name of Jacob to Israel. We saw him said something very, very interesting. He said, I am about to go, but I trust my God, which is in heaven. He will bring you. He will clean your tears, even as I go. We saw Jesus Christ himself said, I am about to depart, but it is of expedience that I go. Because when I go, 
things will become very easy for you. Things will become very good. So you are about to go. You go or you are staying or you witness death. The thing that you should be thinking about in conclusion is one thing. And that thing is in the book of Matthew chapter 25. Am I feeding the poor? Am I caring for the sick? Am I taking care of the prisoner? Am I taking care of the stranger? He said, then shall the Lord appear in the, in, 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 in the throne, and he shall judge the nation, and he shall say to one people, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, and he shall say to the sheep, enter into the Father's paradise, which it was prepared for you. For I was hungry, and you give me food. I was tasty. And you give me meat. I was in prison and you visit me. I was in hospital. All of these things, I have done it at least five, five series each. I was in hospital. Our, what we should do? Five hours each of one, one hour. I use it to uh, analyze this stuff. Let's go. We also see Jesus Christ when he was about to die. He said to his disciple, take care of your mother. And he told the mother, take care of your children. Well, he was still propagating love. We also see him said trying to rescue somebody, a poor and honor, honor, um, um, notorious criminal. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. So even with our death, he was still trying to save people, just like the recurrent word, helping the poor and the needy or developing society generally or trying to make Head here to be like heaven. It's our greatest disposition. So among all the numerous things that we should be thinking about when we see people died is number one, am I in the center of the center of God's plan for our life? Two major things should we be thinking. Of course, three, but two generally. Number one, am I doing what God sent me? Maybe let me say I see somebody died. Am I doing what God actually sent me so that when I die, he will accept me? Is that what I am doing? So this should be our disposition whenever we see somebody die or when we are about to die or when anything about death. This should be our disposition. Number one, we see from the Bible that they serve their generation. They sleep. This one tried to deliver Israel and he said, I die. But my God will complete this battle of trying to deliver Israel from the land of captivity. We saw those kind of things. So number one is, am I doing the will of God for my life? Am I doing what I'm wired for? Of course, if you look at my life, I'm doing what I'm wired for. In case you ask, what are you doing? I am doing what I'm wired for. Number two things that we should be thinking of at the point of our death is, am I making the will of God to be here or not as it is in heaven? Remember the old essence of Christianity, the old essence of Jesus Christ, the old essence why we are living, the old essence of everything is let your will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. So the question is, what is the meaning of that? Because even that word too, let your will be done here. Some people have taken that it is to build big church. It is to buy private jet for the pastor. That is the will of God here on earth. So what is the will of God on earth? We saw that in the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, he said in the heaven, there is no death, there is no weeping, there is no cry, there is no anguish, there is no sorrow. There is all those, he mentioned in Revelation chapter 21 from verse 4 downward. He mentioned all what. So the will of God done here or not, as it is never mean that we should be trying. Wherever we see crying, we should try to remove the sorrow and restore joy. Wherever we see accident, that is sorrow. We should try to see what killed, what happened to the people. Not for we to say, thank God, oh me, I pray, oh, my prophet told me not to travel, oh, but the people did not listen to prophet, oh. No, that should not be our disposition. Our disposition should be, how do we prevent this kind of accident? Because because of bad policy, because of bad road, etc., etc., this accident has happened. We as a Christian should be thinking, how do we develop the community to reduce or eradicate this kind of accident? This should be our disposition as a Christian, not to begin to say that, oh, God has told us that this year will be horrible year, but God has removed we his children. No, God will not remove his children. God would have removed himself from all from horrible things if he was to remove. God would have removed his first disciple from horrible things, but the disciple suffered the greatest horrible things on earth if God was like
like that. So God will not remove. So how can we manage? How can we make heaven, the will of God in heaven, to happen here on earth? Number two will of God in heaven is embedded in the book of Matthew chapter 6. But we will get there. Now, today, what are we looking at? What are we looking at today? Let's go and see what we are looking at. i like us to know our disposition towards death must be that we don't begin to happy and say that, oh, my prophetic father is a very powerful father. If, if it is that, how can Mike Smudok died? T.B. Joshua. Jesus Christ himself, why did he go at 33? Ladies and gentlemen, there are some prayers and there are some wishes that we need to stop. We need to know God has shown us with all indication that these things are wrong, these things that we are praying, these things that we are desiring. However, before we go, let me tell you what you should be saying. I want to tell you exactly what you should be saying at the moment that you face death. Maybe you want to still live your life on head. Maybe you feel like, okay, um, this, 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 that. Let's see what you should be saying. Psalm chapter, Psalm chapter 118. Let's see what you'll be saying in case you want to escape death, which is very good. But let's see what you should be saying. Psalm chapter 118, verse, verse 16 and 17. Psalm chapter 118. Verse 16 and 17. Psalm chapter 100, verse 16 and 17. He said, The Lord's right hand, the right hand of the Lord is exhausted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of God in my generation. The right hand of the Lord is exhausted in case you want to escape death. This is one of the perfect things. I shall not die, but live to do the will of God in my generation. So, I shall not die. Why will you not die? Some people say, I shall not die because of whatever. But this is the real thing that Bible, to do the will of my Father who sent me. I shall not die because I want to do the will of my Father that sent me. The Lord's right hand is exhausted. The Lord's right hand do it valiantly. Because I am here to do the will of my Father that sent me. That is why I shall not die. If I finish the will of my father, I will go, whether it is 40 years, whether it is 10 years, whether it is 100 years, whether it is 200 years, I will surely go. The Lord's right hand is exhausted. The Lord's right hand do it valiantly. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of God in my generation, but live to be the embodiment of Christ in my generation. If you see me, you see Christ. Jesus Christ saved the woman from that was caught in adultery. He rescued the woman and said, Whosoever for the fall, whosoever want to cast on this woman should think that whether he has sort of first season. So anywhere that you see somebody, where they want to beat somebody, where they want to kill somebody, try to use your power to save the person. Try to do everything to save the person. Jesus Christ was going and he saw a lot of horrible things and he was rescued and he was fixing things. Anywhere that they say, Son of David, have mercy on me, he turned back and try to provide solution. Blind Z Z Z um, Zacchaeus said, um, Blind Bartimaeus said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody said, No, it's Jesus Christ cannot have mercy. So Jesus Christ turned back. Anytime that you hear a cry, a cry of mercy, your back must be turned for solution. A cry of mercy, your back must be turned for solution. So now let's go and look at the assignment today. Lazarus, the first thing I want to see about disposition towards death today is Lazarus. Now, um, let's analyze the story of Lazarus. Lazarus was dead and Jesus Christ went there. And the shortest verse in the Bible, in March, Jesus wept. So our disposition towards burial or towards all this kind of thing is that we are free to weep. We can weep. We can cry. A lot of people have said there's no need of crying. Jesus himself weep during death. However, which kind of cry did he cry? We will analyze it. Was he crying because the person died? Was he crying because he loved the person? Was he crying because of whatever? Let's see. In that book of John chapter 11, he said, Jesus wept. And the people said, behold, how he loved him. So he wept because of the love that he had towards this person. 
And when he goes there, he said, Lazarus, come out. So you are trying. Is it that you are trying to save the person who is dead? Or you are trying to save the people who are left alive? Or you are trying to save his relative and family? In case you cannot do like Jesus Christ to save the person who is dead, Jesus' disposition is that we try to save, we try to say, come out from that situation anytime we visit. Is that the children of the person who is dead or the person God who is dead? If you cannot say, we will see another verse that Jesus Christ, that there was a maintenance of the people who were dead. There was care for the people who were dead. And you know, the true religion tell us the real thing. True religion said, this is undefined religion before God. To do justly and to deliver the poor from the distant. So let's see through religion. If we cannot wake the dead, what should, what should we do as a religion person? James chapter 1 verse 17. We need to read that verse. Is it that we rescue the dead person like Jesus Christ did? Or we go ahead and, and take care of the people around? Let's see. James chapter 1 verse 17. Oh, sorry. It's not verse 17. Verse 27, James chapter 1, verse 27. Pure religion and non defied before God and the Father and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widow in their affliction and to keep himself unspotly from the world. To visit the fatherless and the widow. So we have children, fatherless, and the widow. And you know, Jesus Christ's visit is to bring the people out of problem. Joseph said, I die, but my God will surely visit you and bring you out of the land of captivity. So that is the meaning of visited in the Bible. Oh. He said, pure and undefined religion, James chapter 1, verse 27, is to visit the fatherless and the widow and bring them out of their captivity. That is if you cannot wake the one that is dead, like Jesus Christ did. However, do everything to restore joy to the environment. That is the concept of Jesus Christ when it comes to the issue of Lazarus. Now, let's see Acts chapter, 30, Acts chapter 9, verse 36. A widow died. A, the widow was called Tabitha. The widow died. The widow was helping people. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. The widow was going about helping people. When this widow died, what happened? The people came and began to cry. Oh, this widow is the one who do shoot for me. This widow is the one who do. So the, your disposition towards is to remember. Another thing that you should do is to remember the good work that the person do to the poor. Not to the church. The, nobody. Let's read that verse. Nobody went there for his disciple. Jesus' disciple went there and no, there was no one record. This person was sweeping the church. James, Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Let's see what is there. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Let's see what is there. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Now there was at Japa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by inheritance is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good work and um, did which she did. Oh, look at the good work today. Anybody that died, the pastor will go there and say, This person has been sweeping church, this person has been doing this. He said, Um, did um, did um, did he was helping the poor, he was helping the widow, he was helping the poor, he was helping the widow. Una no come from the same tribe, that doesn't matter, brother. It doesn't matter. Show your love. Ooh, ooh. Una nova no una self before. That doesn't matter. Tell her. It doesn't matter. Show your love. Ooh, ooh. If you show your love. If you show your love. If you show your love. Love go they follow you. Ooh. Love go they follow you. Ooh. Anywhere you do. Love go they follow you. Ooh. Oliver the Coco, thank you for giving me that song. Let's go back. Think a little bit. Cabo Sato, Enrique Balbaleto Satota. Think a little bit what everybody say when somebody died in Nigeria. It's just as if we don't know Bible at all. There is no one person that will say this person was helping. If, if they say it, if they only say it maybe like one second, but they use like two, three hours. 
to say oh, he was sweeping church, he was washing pastor cloth, he was giving pastor children food and all the food they're supposed to eat. He was bringing it to pastor children. But let's see Christian disposition. The early disciple, what the early disciple, what matters to the early disciple at the moment that somebody died. Let's go back to that verse again. Now there was a Tabitha, a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arms did which she did. He was giving arm. He was giving free medical tests. He was giving free food. He was giving ham. This is what should be said to you when you die. This is what should be said to you when you die. This is the real thing for you to be thinking when you die. He was giving up. He was giving up. Let's continue. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom, when they had washed, so the, as it's sick, they died, they bath her. They laid her in an upper chamber. Those days they bury people in an upper chamber. They laid her in the upper chamber. And for as much as Lida was near to Joseph, to Jaffa, and the disciple had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. All the widows and the fatherless. You see, this was the meaning of true and undefined religion. All the widows and the fatherless, they were showing the... Peter Gary that the woman gave them when he was alive. They were showing Peter clothes that the woman, this woman, this Dorcas is the one who gave me this clothes when he was alive. This that is our disposition. This man is the one who changed my life when he was alive. This man is the one who was giving me food when he was alive. This man is the one who did not allow me to be in the prison when I was alive. When I was sick, this person was the one who rescued me. This should be Christian disposition. This should be what we should focus on. So you that is alive, are you making the will of God or not to be done here? That is the disposition of the Christian. Not all this one that they are talking about. This woman, widow come, widow fatherless. Exact, go back to James chapter 1 verse 27. Exactly what they talk about. All pure and non-defined religion is to care for the fatherless, to visit the fatherless and the widow in their affliction. Let's continue. Let's see what happened. Then Peter rose up, and all the widows stood by, weeping and showing the coat and garment which Doc has made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. When they were showing them, they, so they begin to bring cloth. This one brings you. This was what this person did to me. This one bring. This was what the cast did to me. This one bring cloth. This was what the cast did to me. This one bring slippers. This was what the cast did to me. And Peter said, okay, this thing is too, is too horrible. This situation needs restoration. All of you that are widow, go out. All of you, go out so that I will be able to concentrate because I cannot concentrate. This good deed of this woman cannot allow my brain to settle again and do the right thing. This good deed of this woman is too much. Please just go out. And when they go out, he lie down on this woman. And said, Tabitha came, come forth. And he that was dead came back to life. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our disposition. Whether dead, whether life, whether whatever. Now, let's go ahead and see. Um, you know, we, we are going to leave Paul and disciple. That is part three. That is where I will finish this message. Part three is coming up in the evening today. Part three, I will finish this message. Our disposition towards death. I have done part one. Today, this one is part two. Part three will be 
Jesus disciple, not Jesus again, Jesus disciple and contemporary society, richest people in the world, what they were thinking about, most successful people in the world, what they were thinking about, about death, some people that we feel that they are good, what they were thinking about during their death. Now let's go ahead and see Job. Let's look at Job because from the last time we'll be talking about only Jesus disciple, which will start with Paul. We are going to see what Paul said about the period that he was about to die. What um, James, what Stephen, all of them said to corroborate with this state of helping the poor and the needy. Because Jesus Christ said, that is even what will make you enter heaven. I was hungry. Go, go to the left. You were good. Because I was hungry, you did not give me food. I was in the hospital, you did not visit me. Now let's go ahead and see Job chapter 29 from verse 4 to 11. Job chapter 29. Job was old and he was about to leave the head. Let's see what that's, that man said when he was about to leave the head. Job chapter 29 from verse 4. He said, As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was in my tabernacle, when the Almighty, and he go ahead and said, When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, because I delivered the poor, that cries, I delivered the poor. This was Job, he was about to die. He said, as it was in the days of my youth when the secret of the Lord was upon me. This was all that I was doing in my youth. I was delivering the poor when they cried. I was trying to do my own best to see that life is better for people. This was my own best. Let's continue. Because I delivered the poor that cries and the fatherless and him that had none to help. He that have none, I help him. I deliver the poor when they cry and the people that have no father. And anybody, whether you have father, whether he that have none, I help him. He that have none, I help him. This is Job's disposition at the moment when he was old, when he cannot carry his hand again, when he was about to die. He began to recall what happened in the days of his youth, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon me, when, when, my, when, I, was, when, I, could not, when I cannot carry my hand again, my feet again. I remember the days of my youth. I was helping the poor. I was helping the fatherless. I was helping the widow. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's go to another person. We see Isaiah. Let's, this is the last person. We will not waste our time so much. We will not take much of our time. Let's look at um, Ezekiah. Or who, who was that person? That the prophet come and say, you will die. Prepare your house, you will die. Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. A prophet come and say, prepare your house, you will die. So the man turned back and began to cry. Oh, that thou, um, you should rescue me from death. Let's see, when somebody receives a death, when somebody knows that my death is near, let's see what the person say. Let's see what the person say. And in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. We know the story. He turned back to the wall and began to cry, God, remember all my good work. God, remember. He turned back to the wall and said, Remember, O Lord, I beseech you, how I have worked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. The man said, Oh Lord, remember me. I have done that which is good in thy sight. What is good in God's sight? Helping the poor and the needy is the what is good in God's sight. And maybe trying to be righteous, trying to be righteous, trying to deviate from sins, trying to help the poor and the needy. That is what is good in thy sight. But the man, um, Ezekiah, continued to say that, Oh, I, I was in sorrow. I was in this. He now said something. He said, uh, he said a lot of things. That he was praying. He, he began to say his prayer. There is no time I would have ex I would have read. He began to say what he was praying as at that time that God wanted to kill him. The, at the last, at the end of the verse, he now said something very, very important. He now said, He said, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. That is when I had that I want to die. But as thou love my soul and deliver it from the pit of hell. He said, For the grave, 18, I'm reading verse Isaiah 38, verse 18. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. 
They that go down into the pit cannot hope for them. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. He said, God, if I die, grave cannot help poor people. Grave cannot celebrate, you know, the mercy of the Lord in the life in, in world. Grave cannot fulfill the mandate of God of I was poor, I was hungry. So who would now celebrate? Who would now make the will of God to come to earth as it is in heaven? Now let's go ahead and look at Micah. Ati fi nyo o omo eni nyo o muto loru de re lo ware alo reti kede o e je rembe lo ri be bo ba ku we have showed you son of man what is it that God require what are you waiting for now let's listen to me. Micah, the verse of Bible that I want to read, crowned everything. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He said something. He said, I, we, I have shown you, oh man, all that God required of you for you to have mercy for the poor and show and show justice. Micah chapter 8, verse Micah chapter 6, verse 8. I have shown you, oh man. All what God required of you for you to show mercy to those who deserve mercy and do justice to the poor and the needy. I have shown you, oh man, all what God required of you for you to have mercy to the poor. I have shown you, oh man, all what you should be doing in your entire life for you to have mercy to the poor and deliver the needy. Now, Let's go to the final, final, finally, finally. My son, you understand? My son is the only one who has this house. My, my child, I have a baby girl. He can enter this house anyhow. Because what? She is my daughter. She cannot be begging to enter house. You understand? So the number one characteristic for you to enter is for you to be the child of God, Abby. It's for you to be a, the child of God. Might you, how can we be this children of God? Is the greatest thing. How can we be the children of God? Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. Tell us something about how to become. Because my, in fact, my child is the one who has this house. It's not even me. So the children of God is the one who even have heaven. So if we are talking about death, we should be talking about how we should enter. So and to, to bring this message to an end, let's look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. He said, That you may be, may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he makes rain. So that, so that you can be the children of your father, which is in heaven. So there is something before you get to that Matthew chapter 45. Now let's go and read what you will do for you to be the children of the father. So Matthew chapter 45 said that you may be the children of a father. Jesus Christ was telling you how to be the children of a father. Matthew chapter 45. So let's go to 41. Let's go to 45 and 43. Matthew chapter 45 is how to be the children of 43. said, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you that you may be the sons of your father which is in heaven. We are talking about our disposition towards death. Now, one of the greatest things that we all desire is to go to heaven. Nobody, everybody is always calculating good things for his own life. Nobody is calculating, nobody will see somewhere where that is about to die or that is dead and say, I want to go to hellfire. And we now come to conclusion now that children are the greatest asset to the father house, Abby. Children are the greatest asset. Now, Jesus Christ now tells us how to become that children. Let's read that verse of the Bible again. You have heard that it has been said, love your, love your friend and love hate your enemy. That is, hate some people, love some people. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Bless them that curse you, that is winch. Winch or pray on curse. Do go to them that hate you. Even people that hate you, do good to them. 
Everything still corroborate with what we are saying, right? Do good to them that hate you. And bless them with despite will easy, so that you will be your father in heaven. Anybody who is desiring to enter heaven must fulfill this verse of Bible. To love those who hate all those things. Anybody who desire to enter heaven must fulfill this verse of the Bible. So now let's evaluate in Nigeria. Nobody can drink water anywhere because this one is winter. This one I cannot greet him. Oh. This one I cannot do this. Oh. Christian, born again Christian. Oh. The only person in, that is not winch now is pastor. Because you're quiet. The person sitting by your left is winch. That is how pastor has spoiled people's mind. The only person who is not winch now in the church, who nobody suspect, is pastor, his wife, his children. Because the next one is sitting here, pastor has preached that the next one sitting here can be the person not allowing you to succeed. The next one sitting here can be the person not allowing you to sleep in the night. Only pastor is the one that fear God now in, in the Nigerian church. The next one, you cannot drink water now. You cannot greet anybody. But let's go back to this verse of the Bible. If you desire to enter heaven, children are the one who have access. In fact, children have access to us more than the father. Except maybe the father is evil father. If, they, if the father have right mind, if nothing is wrong, if the father brain is correct, children owns the house more than the father. I'm not talking about wicked father, Hebrew father, all those that could be that could even throw their children away. But a real father know that what what time will I have to watch the show? I was created to work. It's a child that have all these things. It's a small child. So that is what we are talking about. Now, if you don't love your enemy, if you don't do that. I don't even know the kind of heaven that Nigerian church will even go sir. I don't even know the kind of heaven that this one is which that one is which the only person who is righteous is the pastor and his wife and his children so that you will bring all everything to 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 them so that you will not help the next person sitting here you will not help the next person sitting here you will bring everything to them that is the way the church is structured now. But Jesus Christ even say you should even if let's even assume that this person is winch, even say help him. Let's even assume that this person you quarrel with him, he still say help him, so that what you can be the children of your father, which is in heaven. This is the right disposition towards death. Though. Now, finally, finally, let us see. You are God when you love the poor and the fatherless. This is the last verse of the Bible that we will read today, or about to be the last. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. That is where we will conclude today, as we begin to bring this part 3 of what to do, our disposition towards death. Psalm chapter 82, verse 3, verse 6. Psalm chapter 82. If you are God, that means you own the house now. You own the house now. He said, you are God. He said, we should do something to be God in that verse. Psalm chapter 82. He said, let's go to verses. I have said, you are God. And all of you are the children of the Most High God. But when you do something, that is Psalm chapter 82 from verse 6. Now let's go to verse 1 and see what we should do to become that God. When we are God, we are the one who owns the heaven now. Now let's go to verses. God stand in the congregation of the mighty, Psalm chapter 82. In the, congregation, in the congregation of the mighty, he judge among us. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the person of the wicked? Don't ever let anybody, wicked anybody in your front. Number one, thing to do to be God. Defend the poor and the fatherless. I'm reading verse 3. Chapter 32, verse 3. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Defend mean help. The poor and the fatherless. Defend mean Anybody who is oppressing them with bad policy before he now say you are God. And you know, it's just like me now want to enter this house, Gongo. Nobody can say don't enter. So that is the meaning of the thing that we are talking about. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. What is justice? Think in your mind. That will I be happy if I am the one that is sick? Then why don't I help the sick person so long as I have power? Will I be happy? Will I want to be mad? Then why not rescue? That is just. That is justly. Of course, just could mean lawyer doing the right thing, even when the person don't have money. But just mean put yourself in that person's shoe. That is the wisest thing to judge. Will I have been happy to be mad? 
Will I have been happy to be in prison and nobody visit me, nobody come to try to rescue me? Then why should I not try to rescue somebody? That is justly in the Bible. Because he said, do what you wanted us to do for you. Let's go and see. Deliver the poor and read them out of the hand of the wicked. Anytime you see somebody wicked in the poor, deliver them. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk all in darkness. All the foundation of the earth are shaking. Verse 5 said, because you did not deliver the poor. Because you don't know that. Because you know not that you should be delivered the poor. Because you know not that you should help the needy. All the found, the head will begin to shake. No, nobody will live comfortably again. The poor that you did not help will not allow your life to rest. They will come and disturb you. All the head will be shaking. Blood will flow because you leave the poor and the needy. Verse 3, 4 said, help the poor and the needy. Help fatherless. Otherwise, head will shake up. Otherwise, nobody, head will not be comfortable again for all of you that have forsake the poor and the fatherless. Head will not contain you people again. He said, the head will shake. He said, until you deliver them. Then, verse 6 now said, I have said, you are God. And all of you are the children. Going back to entering our heaven that we are talking about. Our disposition towards death. So, from the left, right, center, we have seen from Bible that if somebody wants to die, you should remember the good work of that person. Number two, you should think that, am I doing the will of God? Am I doing the will of my father, which is in heaven? And other form of thinking to help poor people. Am I forgiving the people who offend me? Am I saying fall down and die instead of me to love people who even cost me? Ladies and gentlemen, I remember Yekonlu Olibasi. I'm out. Bye for now.